Good morning, guys. I hope all is great at your side. Today, inshallah, we are going to finish our mini booklet. Okay. I remember last time we finished the part, the first part of talking about adverbs. So today, inshallah, we complete this part and we add some details about suffixes and affixes, which is an interesting lesson. Inshallah, we're going to finish today. Okay, now we're supposed to answer these pages, starting from page 24 in your homework. So let's check them and make sure you answer them the right way. Okay, fine. Adverbs, add to verbs. This is a quick recap on the use of adverbs. Example, I want, I went to the shop. So when I add an adverb, it would be I went to the shop yesterday and the adverb here will be yesterday, which is an adverb of place. So here he recaps on what we said. Adverbs can add information about how, where, or when the action occurs. So let's put each in the right column. Quickly is how the verb is done. How did you do any verb? I did it quickly. So it will be an adverb of manner. Yesterday is the time of doing the action. So it's an adverb of time. Never, again, another action, another adverb of time. When did you do the action, this action? When did you travel to France? I never traveled. Inside is an adverb of place. Softly is how something is done. Repeatedly is when I repeat my action. When do you visit your grandma? Repeatedly means I always go and visit her. Outside is an adverb of place. Always is related to time as well. And we, we put it under the category of an adverb of frequency. How often do you do something? Early is again when. Later when. Soundly how soundly means in in a way that everybody can hear about eventually means by passage of time by time every time time passes something is develop is developing and and i'm doing it like um the girl is sick but eventually she will she will feel better it means by passage of time she will feel Better. It's a matter of time till she feels better. Quietly is how something is done. Loudly, again, is how. Gently. Okay. okay. So it, it all depends on asking yourself a question about any verb and the answer will be the answer. Okay, here you're supposed to use a word from uh, this table to complete or to put it in the space. John Space attends Mass every Sunday. Attends Mass means he gets into a group, a crowd. And when you attend, it's like when you attend school. Attending school is, we don't say, we say I got school. But I don't, I don't say I go to my lessons. No, I say I attend my lessons. It means I'm there. Okay. So, attend, uh, attend mass. Okay.
and mass again can stand for some religious action at some point it's like attending um, uh, what what do we call it the friday prayer we attend it every week so it is the same almost the same thing okay so attending mass this is the expression like going to church if you wish okay it's a, we, we call it mass because it's a crowd of people every day we we pray the friday prayer it's a mass it's a crowd of people and when you attend mass it means again you go to church you attend your re religious um, event okay so john if you at, if you're attending mass so how this happens religiously he did it because he's a man of religion he's a man who likes his religion and he does it with great polite and great respect okay the small baby slept he's sleeping so it's uh, soundly he can make sound in the coat you can hear his sound in his cot sorry not cot. in his cot means his baby bed the child's face admitted that he had broken the vase honestly if he admitted it means he said it frankly our class read space or read space every morning we read um you read silently of course no so i think here it's not be soundly it will be silent and the other one will be sound silently and this one will be reading sound the swam the swan swam space through the water it swam elegantly it means it looked nice while swimming the line roared fiercely means wildly in a fierce way in a wild way the teacher shouted angrily she shouted angrily i space i space space said thank you i politely okay so in each time i used one of the adverbs i said a piece of a, an extra piece of information about the verb this is the job of an adverb now here circle the correct adverb in each sentence let's highlight it this is easier because to make it clear for you so the child played the children sorry played happily or sadly playing is related to happiness so they played happily the fierce line roared loudly the little girl gently or roughly petted the small kitten she's little so she, she def so definitely she does things gently and petted means she she put her hand on her back in an action or an act of kind she she wants to act like a kind girl the sensible lady neatly or untidily packed the suitcase the sensible lady means sensible lady is equal to gentleman a man is gentle and a lady is sensible and both can do things neatly the parent carefully or carelessly nursed the baby nursed the baby means took care of the baby while he was sick and such things happen carefully the small puppy playfully or fiercely tugged at the rope if he's a small puppy then it's a pet and he's playing so it's playful the witch cackled kindly or wickedly a witch is a bad person and wickedly is doing things in a bad way <clears throat> with bad intentions wickedly is doing things with bad intentions you don't mean good when you're wicked you do things but you don't mean good the child politely or rudely thanked her aunt thanking is always polite so politely No, I see. Okay. 
the ballerina danced gracefully or awkwardly. Awkwardly is is strangely or in an awkward way, in a in a way that you do not like. And she's a ballerina, so she she dances dances gracefully and beautifully. The bold child laughed kindly or nastily at the girl who fell. He's a bold child means he's not polite and he's not afraid to do bad things out loud. He's bold. Okay? He's not he's not brave in a good way. No, he's brave but in a bad way, in a rude way. So definitely he laughed nastily, laughed at a, in a bad way at the girl who fell. The monster gradually or suddenly jumped out from behind the tree. He's a monster, so he means to scare people. So it doesn't happen gradually. Gradually means step by step. No, if you want to scare someone, you do it suddenly. The class immediately or eventually left the school when they heard the first alarm. It's an alarm. It's something that tells them a problem is approaching. So this does not think, this does not happen. This thing does not happen eventually. It does not happen through a long time. It happens immediately. It happens at once. An alarm means a problem is approaching, so people have to be quick. Okay. Here, great ways to create adverbials. Adverbials are phrases, an adverb in the form of a phrase. Okay? The snowboarder jumped. This is the example, the main example we are using here. Okay? Okay, this is the big, oh, this is a very big example. Okay. So, if I want to complete this with an adverbial, an adverbial we said is an adverb in the, vo in the form of a phrase. An adverb in the form of a phrase means not one word. This adverb is not a one word. It's a couple of words. So, how can I complete it? This one. I can connect adverbs. Means I can put two adverbs one after the other. So I say the snowboarder jump skillfully and swiftly. And now it's called Yes, it's called connected adverbs. This is one way of creating an adverbial because this is the main focus now. We are creating adverbials in different way. One of the most famous ones is to connect two adverbs one after the other. Now by creating a simile, the snowboarder jumped as high as a kangaroo. So if I ask you a question, how did he jump? You will answer and say, as high as a kangaroo. This is an adverbial. Or you can say like a shooting star, another simile who acted like an adverbial. You can make comparison. So you say the snowboarder jumped as if he had springs. Okay, this is one way. Okay. I'm trying to create a straight one, you know. You can also create an adverbial when you answer a question with why about the verb, when you say the reason why you're doing the action. So when we say the snowboarder jumped to win the competition, now you answered the question of why, why did he jump, and you put this in a phrase, a couple of words, and we call it an adverbial. You can put it in a prepositional phrase. So the snowboarder jumped over the tree tops. Another form of adverbs. Last one and most famous is to tell time of the action. When you say the snowboarder jumped until the sun went down. He kept jumping until the sun went down, which is sunset. So you see how, how many answers can act like adverbials 
can act like adverbs, but in the form of a phrase of more than one word. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You have six ways to make or to create an action, but um, to create asfa, to create an adverb, but in the form of many, of using many words, not only a word with L-Y, no, you're going to form the adverb in the form of using many words, and here I don't call it an adverb, it does the same job, but I call it an adverbial. So these are a couple of words that answer a question about the verb, and because they are more than one word, I call them adverbials. If they are one word, if it's one word, so like I was running quickly. Quickly here is an adverb. If I say quickly and happily, it's called an adverb because it's more than, it's an adverb, but formed in more than one word. And you have six ways to create an adverb. I hope you have a close look at that. And this is the main example I want you to have very close look at this one. Let's put it in a different color. Because I want you to, to have a close look at it, yeah, to know that this is the main sentence and the ones in yellow are completions or adverbials to complete this main one, this main sentence. The six of them, but we go down to the six of them. Okay. We said that if you use an adverb in more than one word, it's called an adverbial. A fronted adverbial is when you use an adverb, which is in more than one word, you put it at the beginning of a sentence. Like what? An adverbial placed at the beginning of a sentence. An adverbial placed at the beginning of a sentence. This is the what? This is the fronted adverbial. We call it fronted adverb. Okay? When an adverb is formed, like a phrase, I use more than one word to form it. And I put these couple of words which act like an adverb. I put them at the beginning of a, of a sentence. It's called an adverbial, prompted adverbial. So we have three degrees of adverbs. We have one word adverb to answer a question about the verb. If you answer the question about the verb using more than one word, it's called an adverbial. If, if this adverbial comes at the front or at the beginning of the sentence, it's called the fronted adverbial. Okay? And it is separated from the sentence to follow by a comma. You use a comma to separate them. Like what? Let's see this. Rewrite these sentences using a fronted adverb. The man had his memories removed from head. So, let's make it. So, how did the man have his memories removed from his head? So, removed from his head, comma, the man had his memories. Okay. Or removed from behind. I'm sorry, <laughs> I read it from his head. I'm very sorry. So the man had removed from behind. I'm sorry. Removed from behind, the man had his memories. There is an easier way of putting it, is to put it from the preposition. Like what? Like from behind. From behind, the man had his memories removed. To start with the prepositional, 
just to, to start, yes, with the prepositional phrase. This one. Okay. And this is the easiest way. So you bring it to the front, and now you have a fronted adverb. Let's try it with something else. The robot surrounded the heroes in the park. Where is the place? Where did he surround them? In the park. So I'm going to bring it to the front part, and it acts like a fronted adverb. Like what? In the park, comma, the robot surrounded the heroes. Okay, another one. The villain was hiding behind the boxes. Another place. Where did he hide? Behind the boxes. And to make it a fronted adverbially, bring it to the front. So it becomes behind the boxes. Behind the boxes, the villain was hiding. Now I created a fronted adverb. Okay, last one, the villain was tied up using a steel pole. So how was he tied up? Using a steel pole, this one. We're going to bring it to the front to create a fronted adverb. So it's going to be using a <coughs> steel pole, comma, the villain was by why are you teaching us this? Why? If you're asking me this question, why am I studying as a student? Why am I studying the fronted adverb? Good question. You're studying fronted adverbs because they are granted very high marks in the exam. If you start your sentences in the exam, every time with a, with a different way, one of the ways could be this fronted adverb. And you can use it more than once because one time you start with the place, one time you start with the, with the time, one time you start with how things are done. Okay, and this is a great way of getting marks in your writing exam. So that's why we are learning about the fronted adverbs and the adverbs in general. They are the, the adverbs <clears throat> are parts of speech that are given very high marks in the exam, very high marks. So this is. A very good thing to, to know. Now we come to prefixes. The word prefix is tells you about starting letters. Prefixes are fixed starting letters with fixed meanings. Like what? When I say anti, it means against. Antifreeze means it's against freezing, it will not freeze. Antivirus, it means it's against virus, it will, it will stop it. Okay? Uh, antibiotic means it's, uh, it's against bacteria, it will stop the bacteria, and so on. When I have the prefix D, means opposite. Defrost means it will not turn into frost, it will not turn into ice, the small ice. This means not, like disagree means I don't agree, disapprove, I don't approve. N or M means cause, cause to, like encode or embrace. Encode means make it happen like um, Create the code. Encode it means turn it into a code. Make it a code. Okay. As a student, am I supposed to know all of this? No. 
we have very famous ones, which I'm going to highlight now, and I want you to make sure that you know them very well. I want you to know anti. One second. Because this is too big, you see. I want you to know anti, this, in, or im, in, or im, or in, or er, both at some point called equal, uh, called the not, sorry. Enter means between, mid means middle of something, miss means wrongly done, like misunderstand, misfire, none means not, over, of course you know, pre means before, re means again, semi means half, sub means under, like subtitle, a title, a small title under the big one, super means above, un, means not, and under is under. The ones I removed are not very common. You don't know, you don't need to know them. They're not very common. I give you the most common ones. So what about the suffix? The suffix is the opposite of antonym. Suffixes are the opposite of prefixes, sorry. <coughs> suffixes are fixed, Ending letters, fixed ending letters, with fixed meanings. If you end a word with this suffix, it will mean a, a, a specific meaning, a fixed meaning, like the prefix. Like what? Able means can be done. Convertible means can be convertible. Again, I'll give you the most common one. A-L and A-I-L, I'll, means like something person is you. So things personal are related only to you, having the characteristics of you, looking like you. E-D, to show the past. E-N, to, to show that it's made of something like wooden, made of wood. ER to compare, higher, smaller, bigger. Another ER to show who does the job or who does something. Worker, the one who works, actor, the one who acts. EST is the superlative, biggest, smallest. Full means full of, like careful, beautiful. Careful means full of care. Beautiful means full of beauty. Okay. You have IC, it's not very common, ING for, for the present continuous running. Ah, this is very important, the ION, TION, AT, ION. These, these four are to show the process of something, to create the noun of something. Attract is to make people come close to you. So this is your attraction, your ability to attract people. It turns a verb into a noun. This suffix, or this group of suffixes, turn a verb into a noun. Okay. Specifically this group, because this is the most common of all the other uh, suffixes. Okay, we have again less to show that something is without. Fearless means it does not feel fear or it is not afraid. LY to show the characteristics of something and create adverb. Meant is another way of creating a noun. It's another way of creating a noun out of a verb. Okay, the same goes to N-E-S-S, 
So how do I know which noun ends with what? Unfortunately, you have to know them by heart. You study them very well. There is no rule for these. Okay. So you highlight this. <clears throat> S and ES to create plural and Y, but not, but, but why I don't stress on it. No, 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 we don't stress on it. Okay. Okay. So these are again the most common suffixes. So what do you want to do here? What we want to do is to highlight the fact that a prefix is a starting group of letters and a prefix and, and a suffix is a group of ending letters. And both change the meaning of the word, change its word class. For example, beauty is a noun. If you put the suffix F-U-L, it changes into an adjective. It, it changes into a different part of speech. So suffix or prefix, both change one word to become or to be. To change one word, both change one word to be classified as a different part of speech. What we call has a different or becomes a different, sorry, becomes a different word class okay so we, we, we said the example beauty is noun when I use when I add the suffix ful it becomes beautiful which is an adjective Okay, so this is the main job of um, the prefix and suffix. Okay, let's try answering this question. Read the sentences. One to eight below and decide on the correct prefix or suffix for the words in italics. There was a lot of che cheating. The match was fair. No, fair is the wrong word. The match was unfair. You have to put the prefix un. Okay. This is a very dark color, so let's change it. We decided to visit the house because we hadn't looked at everything the first time. We decided to, vis to visit the house because we hadn't looked at everything the first time. Okay, so let's so let's see. Uh, the suffix here, it will be visit. We need the suffix re. We decided to revisit the house, to visit it again, because we didn't look at everything the first time. We visit the house. Okay. My new washing machine is completely used. It doesn't work proper properly. So it's completely useless. I add the suffix L-E-S-S. Useless. It's completely useless because it doesn't work properly. Please be careful. Ah, oh, I answered. Okay. Please be careful. It will be careful. The steps down to the cellar are very steep, are very sharp. They can put you very slippery. So, careful. He couldn't take his eyes of her. She was incredibly attracted. No, 
incredibly attractive. It was a wonderfully quiet part of the world. Everything felt so peace, no, so peaceful. I must have heard you because I thought you called out my name. So I have, uh, what is, ah, I must have heard you because I thought you yelled out my name. So this one, which I want you to guess. So which one, which I can I change here? So these two you try on your own and I'll be sending the answers on the group, okay? Seven and eight. But you got the main, the main idea by doing the other exercise. So, let's do this one. Complete the sentences by writing the correct prefix. Okay. I just can't believe it. The story is unbelievable. Is there a rule for this? No, there isn't. There isn't a rule. Remember this. There isn't a rule. We just know the words by heart. So, no, no, that answer is incorrect. It's one word, by the way. I'm sorry that I wrote it that far. It's one word. It should be directly next to the word because they form one word together. Okay? Let's look at this information again. We should review. Review means look at it again. We should review it before... Review it before the test. Okay. I saw Alison just a moment ago, but now I can't find her. It seemed that she disappeared. Means we cannot see her. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you correctly. I misunderstood you. The subway does not go over the land like a normal train. It moves underground. By answering this question, now we finished our lesson today about um, the rest of adverbs. We knew what's an adverbial. It's an adverb, but in the form of a phrase. And if it appeared at the beginning of the sentence, it's a fronted adverbial. We got to know what's a prefix. It's a, a, a set of letters that has a fixed meaning. And every time we use it, it changes the word class of uh, the, the word and the suffix are ending letters which do the same job. I hope you got it well. Um, and next time, inshallah, we're going to start on a quick recap on the main points uh, in the reading comprehension and grammar points. We are going to uh, start on them. Not the next session, the one after, because next session is going to be an activity session. I'm going to share an interesting video with you which is supporting to the lessons we already studied. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and thank you very much.